Hello viewers, Jimmy the Mechanic here. Figured I'd show you a short little video on a 2003 F-250. It's the uh, 6.8 SDs. Um, what happens is the backing plate rusts completely apart and you have no pins to hold your brake shoes in. As you can see, there's a hole all the way through it. So, yeah. To replace this is not as hard as it sounds or looks. Um, basically, you start with taking your wheel off, take your lug nuts off, and I would also recommend jacking one side of the vehicle up a little higher, whichever one you're changing, so that it will keep your um, rear diff fluid from running out of the axle because you are going to pull the axle for this job. But don't get scared by that. It is not as bad as it seems. Um, basically, when you take your rotor off, you're going to take your see what I did with it oh yeah your uh, brake pad for your rotor your brake pad bracket you're gonna take this off um, you've got two bolts holding it into the back of this and then I believe those were 18 millimeter so take those out take your caliper off of course before you do that and just kind of set it up don't let it hang by the hose because what can happen is it can actually break this hose so I've seen a lot of people let this caliper just hang definitely not a good idea especially on a vehicle that's kind of well you can see it's a little rusted under here so you definitely don't want to do that um, so anyways once you do that you're just going to take these bolts out there's eight of these 18 millimeter bolts um, so once you do that this whole axle is just going to pull out you'll see there's a seal around this you don't have to have a puller for this or anything. You're just going to gently kind of kind of wiggle and pull it out. Now make sure to pull it out evenly. Don't let it drop down and then kind of pull it at an angle downward. You're going to pull it straight out. So you'll have to use both hands, kind of guide it out. Just keep working your hands out until it, it clears. Then obviously don't set the spline in in the dirt. Um, but anyways, I'm going to take these bolts out, and I'll be back here in a short minute. This is a two-handed job, so... Okay, so we're back, back to um, after we remove the bolts, we're gonna remove this piece. This one was a little seized. Um, like I said, you don't need a puller. You may need to pry it out just a little bit. So I'm just gonna bump it a little bit. And you can see it's starting to break loose. But just be gentle. Kinda putting my pry bar against the lugs. All right, there we go, that's it. You can see the fluid pouring out now. So I'm going to jack it up a little bit more, stop that stream, okay, so that'll make it a little more difficult for it to run uphill and lose all the fluid. Like I said, this axle's out, so you're just going to, there it came, came out of the spline at the diff, so just pull it out gently. Okay, so we've got the axle out, got it kind of propped up a little bit so we don't have that in the dirt, getting it all contaminated. So here you have your spindle nut, it's like a locking nut, you can see there's four slots in it. Next thing you're going to need to do is get one of these tools, if I can get it, there you go, where you can see a little better. Bought this one at Napa, all it is is an adapter for the spindle nut, it's called a spindle socket, it's a four lug. There are two different sizes of these, so make sure that you do get the appropriate one. I think this one said... Um, actually on the back of the package actually it said 1998 to current F250 so um, that'll let you know that you got the right one you're just going to put it in here and that's it you're just going to break that loose shouldn't be too tight yeah not at all so actually this one's reversed forgot to mention that so backwards threads on this one So the passenger side turns to the left, this one is left handed threads, you're going to turn it to the right to loosen it. So make sure that you do that. I don't really have a long ratchet so it's not that tight. Alright. Also, apologize for the mumbling. 
and confusion. I've only had one cup of coffee today, which, you know, it's obviously not enough. Should generally drink two to ten cups of coffee per hour. No, I'm joking. So the spindle lock nut is starting to come loose, as you can see. So once you get it loose enough to where you can turn it by hand, just kind of pull it out of there, turn it, get it loose right out of there. All right, there we go. So that's out. Set it to the side. Also, make sure that you keep your bolt kind of somewhere where you don't lose them and get them kicked around the gravel. All right, so the next step, you can see here's the wheel bearings. Um, you're going to pull this hub off, this, this spindle. Um, so what you want to do is pull it off evenly just like you did the axle and do not lean one end to the ground. When you set it down, you want to set it down level because there are bearings in the back of this um, that will be separated from the race and they will fall out. So just make sure that you set this down evenly. So back here again, my apologies. Um, you will need a three jaw gear puller. You can buy these at AutoZone Advance. I think this one was 40 bucks. And maybe a plate to go over your axle housing there. So this is what I used is a tie rod end. So the tie rod end remover, that's what this is. So kind of like a homemade redneck way, but all you gotta do is just kind of turn this, you know, once you get it tied, get it locked around the spindle, your puller and it's just gonna pop right off. It's actually not very tight, but it's just a little too tight for, you might be able to use a slide hammer, but I don't really, rec I don't really recommend that because you're gonna knock your bearings out of the race and they're gonna, it's gonna be nasty. So unless you're planning to put new bearings back, if you are, you might take a hammer and knock it out. But I would just buy the puller, that way you'll have it in case you need it for another project. But um, yeah, so I just took the end of a tie rod, tie rod end puller here, tie rod end tool took the u-bolt off and flip the thing over backwards and it sits in there perfectly okay so i wouldn't advise trying to pull this spindle off it's pretty heavy one-handed but i'm going to attempt it just for educational purposes so you're just gonna yep see we lost the race in the front but no big deal the bearings are still in the uh still in the race so we're good but that's basically it then once you do this you're just going to disassemble your brake shoes which I will show coming up in the following. Okay, so we're kind of in a little bit of a time crunch here. I do have my business going on, so kind of got to get this done, but <clears throat> I will walk you guys through the rest of this. I'm not going to actually be able to show you um, step by step, but I'm going to walk you through what needs to happen next. So the next thing I would do is I would spray these springs kind of down with some penetrating oil and your activation lever right here. Spray that down with some oil adjuster as well so that you can get these to release easily. Turn your adjuster all the way in. Chances are, if you're attempting this, you've probably changed brake shoes before, I would say. But, uh, let's turn your drum. Shoes in, there we go, get them loose. You can see this adjuster is kind of loose now. I'm gonna pop off this bottom spring with a screwdriver or a pair of pliers. Once I do that, the adjuster's just gonna fall out. Um, so keep up with those pieces if you're going to reuse them. Um, I would probably replace the springs because they're not very much. Then you're going to take your retaining hats off. You just got to press this in. You're going to reach around the back and turn that to release that key. Once you do that, this will loosen up. Once you do that, you're going to grab the bottom of these shoes. I just kind of pry them apart, spread them, and then you can pull them out of these slots. But just uh, kind of be kind of be easy with that. Um, so then moving on, you've got four bolts in the back. I uh, can't remember exactly what size they were, maybe 5 eighths or 11 sixteenths. You're going to loosen those. All right, so that's gonna let this whole backing plate come loose so that you can pull it off of the axle. Once you have your shoes completely off. Then you can see, here's the back of those there. Try to move this race out of the way. They're not a hex head or anything, but they are splined just like a lug nut on a wheel. So once you loosen those and you actually have this piece on the ground, the cable is going to come with it, the emergency brake cable. So you might want to secure your caliper as well because I'm going to have to move this and it's actually resting on it. But take this off. <clears throat> once that comes off on the ground, you'll actually be able to drive these bolts out with a hammer. They're, I mean, give them a few good whacks with a, with a ball peen or something, they'll fall out. And then you'll be able to pull the rest of this backing plate off. 
So this backing plate will actually come off of this metal piece here. You can see it's two pieces. Backing plate will actually come off once you drive those bolts out. Put your other one on the same way with your half moon, you know, facing the caliper as it sits here. And make sure that you have this facing right. Um, you've got this protruding end here. Should be facing you. So that lip is this way. So, but anyways, it's really not too not too hard. You can uh, call me if you have some questions, and I will re reply promptly. Let you know where you're wrong or if you're going right or whatever. But uh, also, when you get your shoes off, you're gonna remove this this lever here. It will actually just pull out of the back. So where the lever is connected, you're gonna take that that hook out of it and then actually pull it forward my bad so take this little hook out here pull the whole thing forward put your new rubber booties in if you're going to replace those then when you reassemble this axle do everything the reverse now with the spindle retaining pin what i would do is i would torque this to 70 pounds 70 foot pounds with a torque wrench okay that's not super tight that's that's less than than a lug nut on a wheel so do not over tighten it as you can see here somebody galled the threads on these bolts because they over tightened them Let's see if we can get a better camera angle for you can see that oh yeah so yeah those those are about to strip which means that they would have to re-tap the axle the hub sorry so there's eight of these they do not need to be that tight i mean i'm i'm throwing a number out there but probably 40 foot pounds at the most 35 so do not over tighten those but put everything back on when you when you got this hub back on the spindle you want to put it on evenly like i said don't knock the bearings out of the race kind of hold forward pressure on it you know like you're pushing it in toward the differential while you put your lock nut on that way it can't fall or knock the bearings out of the race and get wobbly when you tighten it down to 70 foot pounds spin the hub a few times check it Make sure it's still at 70 foot-pounds, spin it a few times, back it off, seven clicks if you're reusing your old bearings, and then five if you're going to put new bearings in because they won't have as much slop in them. So just make sure that you can't actually wiggle this, you know, in and out, and then you've got it, got it tight enough. So hope you've enjoyed watching. If you have any comments, questions, please post them, subscribe to my channel, and you will have some more videos coming up. Thanks. Okay, so figured I'd chime back in, let you guys know a few things. First of all, it's easier on these retaining pins here if you just push in with the needle nose, turn it from the outside, and the hat will just pop off. Second thing, make sure you keep your fingers out of the way of these springs because I don't want somebody suing me because they get their eye put out. So um, wear safety glasses, keep you from getting hit in the eye with rust or anything. Because I mean, I've been to the doctor with a scratched cornea, not fun. Um, definitely taught me a lesson not to be lazy and just put on some glasses you can see here's your backing plate what's left of it um, so and here's your four bolts that are 5 8 or 11 16 not sure but um, yeah so this piece right here I, I originally told you guys pull it out the back it actually pulls out forward once you take the hook off and from here I'm fairly confident you guys can handle the rest um, there's not that much left after this put your stuff back together reach in behind where your adjuster booty is right here pop that old one out and reach up in there figure out which way you need to turn it to spread your adjuster make sure your adjusters are turned the right way if you're not sure take a picture of it that way you know where everything goes so um, once you do that you're going to put everything back together put your wheel on Make sure the wheel can move freely without being stopped by the adjuster, but you want it just to that point where it's starting to drag. When you turn the wheel, the brake's starting to drag sl slightly. Um, you don't want it to just flop, you know, when you put the rotor back on. That means that your adjusters aren't out enough. It's going to end up like stretching your emergency brake cable too far. So um, from here, you guys can handle the rest. Definitely sure. Positive. Have a good day.